a lot of things that went on through my life in those uh, early years of being a young man, military, Marine Corps, getting married, kids. Uh, I actually came to a point where uh, our marriage, my wife Cindy and I, it was, it was really ready to end. In fact, the only reason we were staying together was that neither of us could stand the idea of being away from our oldest son, Courtney, who was 18 months at the time. And so we agreed to stay together just for that. But I also happened to still be at a point where uh, God was important and the ideas that uh, um, this running had to come to an end, yet really I didn't care for myself. I was on my way to hell and uh, that didn't bother me. But I started thinking about my little boy and the idea of him, that little baby that I love so much, in, in the flames of hell. And knowing that the father kind of leads and guides the children, they'll do the same things that the dads do. And if I was on my way to hell and destruction, uh, there was a really good chance my son was as well. Thank God I just happened to work with a young lady who uh, one day during break uh, started to share the gospel with me. But she did it in such a way that she said, Jerry, I see that you're taking care of your, your family's physical needs, and, and that's really valuable. But she said, you know, you're just as responsible for his spiritual needs. And that hit me because I started thinking of uh, my father, and um, he would tell me not to steal. And yet, our house was full of things that he had stolen from the employer that he worked for. And I had started doing the same thing. In fact, I would steal things, get them home, and think, I don't need this. What did I take this for? And then I'd throw it away. Uh, I was following in my dad's footsteps, and it made me think back to my son, and what would he do, and where would he wind up spending eternity. Uh, getting back to the shots that I made, being a hunting safety instructor in the state of Ohio, one of the things that we teach is making sure that you do a quick, clean, and humane kill. And uh, of course that's what you're hoping for with that practice, practice, practice. But when it came to a scripture verse in the Bible, uh, and it was referring to the crucifixion, which was anything but a quick, clean, and humane kill. In fact, people would hang on the cross for four days. Uh, that scripture verse in Luke, in fact, Luke 23, 42, spoke to me like no other. Several uh, books earlier, in the book of Matthew, we see the two thieves hanging on the cross with Jesus, and they're both making fun of him. But uh, the uh, book of Luke we get back a little bit, uh, maybe, maybe almost three hours later, and the scenario has changed. What takes place in the book of Luke is that uh, we uh, hear again one of the thieves starting to make fun of Jesus, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, Hey Jesus, if you're who you claim to be, get yourself down and, and us too. But at this point, the other thief has had a reality check because he's come to the point where he knows he's going to die. And he's been watching the Lord hanging on the cross. And he, after hearing the other thief make fun of Jesus again, says, man, are you crazy? What are you talking about? And what he's doing here, what's happening here, is there has been a change of heart in him. But I guess what I should also do is tell you just how terrible the death on the cross was. In fact, the word crucifixion was invented because there was no other word to cover how horrible this type of um, death was. Uh, originally, the Persians had uh, begun doing it, but it was the Romans who perfected it. You see, earlier before the cross, uh, Jesus had been whipped, scourged, and uh, they used a type of whip that had many, many leather thongs, and on the ends of the thongs they would put um, metal hooks, bone, glass, lead balls that would actually bruise the flesh. Then the other 
uh, hooks and things could rip it open. People actually died from this kind of a whipping and uh, they would be whipped to the point where even bones, the, the spinal column and the ribs would be exposed. And so here Jesus hanging on the cross and he went there to uh, take the sins of you and I on that cross with him. Uh, they had nailed him in such a way that his feet were uh, nailed together and nailed in the hands and in order to get a breath after hanging for a period of time like this he would have to go up and down and his back like hamburger would be rubbing against that cross as he went up and down each time he needed to catch a breath that was the only way he could breathe in fact that's really what normally took place as a person would get so tired of pushing themselves up or they would give up and uh, then then they would expire uh, while they hung on the cross, birds would land on them and, and tear at their flesh and insects would land and, and bore in. And just like I, I've seen uh, yellow jackets land on the kill uh, of a, a deer or uh, another kind of large uh, animal that might be harvested and cut off flesh and fly away, the same thing would happen on the cross. Unlike uh, we hunters, as we're supposed to be making sure that we uh, carry out a quick, clean, and humane kill. The cross was anything but that. And as Jesus hung on the cross there for us, um, shedding his blood, which would cover our sins, and he took the sins of every man, woman, and child on that cross with him. Again, that, that other thief said, can't you see that this man has done nothing? He realized he was who he claimed to be. He was God in the flesh, he was Emmanuel, who had come to suffer and die for all of mankind. And after telling the other thief to shut up, he asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Three things happened there at that point. Um, that was that this fellow realized he was a sinner. The scripture tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And also it says there's not a righteous man on earth who has done what is right and not sinned. So he's admitting that he was a sinner. He, in those three hours or so, as that time on the cross took place, must have come to a point where he was sorry for those sins. And he realized that there was only one that could save. That was Jesus Christ. Didn't have to do a whole bunch of stuff like I had been taught. It wasn't like he had to get down from the cross and carry out this action and that action. No, it was believing and having uh, faith that Jesus Christ could save and asking him to be his savior. And it was that simple. And what did Jesus say? Again, he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And friends, the same thing can happen for you. Uh, you can as simply as receiving him in faith believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. You can have Christ as your savior too, and you will be able to see Jesus in paradise. In the book of John, the fifth chapter and the 24th verse, um, that scripture tells us that uh, once we do that, that by believing in Jesus Christ by faith, confessing with our mouth, and asking him to be our Lord and Savior coming into our heart. Uh, we don't have to be concerned anymore about whether or not we'll be with him for eternity. And I think that is a verse that should be considered by you. And I also think that um, as you're beginning a new life with Christ, I would suggest that you take the entire book of John, read it, again and again, um, it will share with you the personality of the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, what he came to do for us, and um, what uh, it is that uh, he would have us to do. It's a good start for a person who is beginning a journey with our God and our Lord and our Savior.